Hey everyone, Scott here, better known as Narebo, and today I'm going to illustrate an ITA Airways, or ETA Airways, A320neo in what I consider to be one of the best looking airline liveries of all time. Now, when this livery first came out, I didn't like it, I thought it was overly simplistic, kind of thought it was tacky a little bit, but... Once I got to see it in direct sunlight, I knew that this was one of my favorites, and uh, I've, I've been wanting to illustrate it for a long time, and because I got a chance to fly in one of these things back in January, I needed to illustrate it for my travel blog, sandspotter.com, and uh, yeah, this is the process, and you know, this is one of those liveries that it looks simple, and it really is, I mean, there's no, there's not that much to it. But when you really look at it, it's highly, highly detailed. And it's, it's one of those liveries which is just a total grind. It's, it's a lot of work. It's not difficult to illustrate. It's just time consuming because there are so many little details. Kind of like the Hawaiian Airlines livery that I showed you in my last video. Not complicated, just detailed. So... Yeah, the tail or the aft section of this livery on any ETA or ITA Airways aircraft is covered in these little icons, and it's a completely random set of icons. There's maybe, I didn't count them total, but maybe there's, maybe there's 20 different versions, 15 to 20 different icons total that make up this grid of, of graphic elements that, that cover the entire aft section of the aircraft from the vertical stabilizer down into the fuselage. And it's just repeated randomly over and over again. And I'm sure all these icons mean something. Maybe there, it's some, some Italian heritage thing. I don't know. All I do know is that they're very simple and they're very, they're very basic. They all consist of very basic shapes. So it was just a matter of finding the time to sit down and trace all these things out over a very high resolution photo that I took. Actually, it was a photo that I took at the Rome airport back in January when I took this flight. So yeah, I had to start with a very high resolution photo because I couldn't find anything online that was clear enough on the A320neo that I could trace and use as the basis for my illustration. So I'm here in Adobe Illustrator tracing away and this entire process of tracing these icons took about if i recall i did this a while ago it was probably two and a half hours so yeah it was it was a slog but it felt really good once i got it all done because there's there's so much to it and as you're about to see the placement of the icons and the way that it actually wraps around the, the shape of the aircraft from the vertical stabilizer down onto the fuselage. And as you know, the fuselage is a, is a cylinder and it's, it's complicated. <laughs> and I'll explain that process when I get there. But for now, it was just a matter of getting all these little individual icons. And I honestly didn't even know how, it, how I was going to map it to the shape of the aircraft once I got to that point. My plan was just to trace exactly what I saw on this photo because this photo is a direct side-on view of the Airbus A320neo. And I thought, yeah, it's high resolution. I can just trace exactly what I see as it's wrapping around the fuselage. That way I don't have to worry about mapping it myself because that can get a little bit complicated. Yeah, <laughs> okay. It seemed like I could do that. And that was my plan at this point. Didn't go that way, as you'll see. And I kind of hacked it. And at the very end, you'll see that it didn't really matter all that much because it's, it's so simple. I mean, it's so, I guess a better way of saying it is that it's so, it's so subtle. You're not even going to see that I hacked it. But um, yeah, this, these icons, there were so many. And I noticed that once I got to the bottom portion down into the fuselage there, I started to notice there was more icons or there were more icons that weren't up in the vertical stabilizer. So it's completely random. I don't know how they, I don't know. Maybe, maybe there was a method for them to arrange all these things. Maybe there was a system in place. I don't know what it was. I couldn't find what that system was 
because it was just so completely random. And uh, yeah, it was about this point. I'm just I'm just burned out on doing these little icons. And the best part of this livery by far is the color, that metallic blue. I just could not wait to get to that point. But it's just hours and hours of work creating all these little icons. But like I said, it was only two and a half hours, but it felt like a lot. And uh, yeah, so now I think I've got all of the icons created in some form or another. And now I'm just placing them onto the photo as best I can in their correct position, adjusting the scale as I move down the vertical stabilizer into the fuselage. And they actually do change scale. So at the top, they're, they're much larger. And then as you move down, they become smaller. And uh, I believe the, the, the grid spacing becomes a little bit more dense. I don't know. It didn't really make sense to me. And here you see me realizing that I've got a little problem because I created all these icons, but the way that it connects or the way that it hits the, the, the connection point of the vertical stabilizer and the fuselage is a little bit messy. And there were some elements that I couldn't even see in my reference photo. Like I couldn't see how the icons individually wrapped and how their shape changed. It was really complex. And even at this point, it's looking like I've got all the icons done. I'm so close. I was actually thinking that maybe what I had done was not good. Maybe it was not even going to work and that I was going to have to start over and getting a little bit scared at this point, to be honest, but I don't know. I just <laughs> kept going and I'm glad I did because what I ended up doing was deciding that I wasn't going to worry about trying to match or to, to, to wrap the icons around the, the shape of the fuselage because these icons are so subtle. And I didn't even know these icons existed until I saw this livery in person in the sunlight. I never saw it in the reference photos. And I was thinking, okay, no one's ever really going to notice. So here I am thinking, okay, trying to trace every little icon on the aircraft was a little bit stupid. So I decided that what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a very evenly spaced grid, not worrying about the shape of the aircraft at all. I just want to get these icons into a grid, evenly spaced, and then I'll just place it over top of the aircraft. And no one's ever going to know. You guys know because you're watching this video, but I guarantee most anyone who looks at my illustration would never even know that I didn't bother to take the time to wrap it around the fuselage. And yes, you can do that in Adobe Illustrator. It's just very time consuming and I didn't really feel like messing with that because I was so many hours into this illustration already that it wasn't going to matter. So yeah, so now I'm using my Airbus A320 Neo template and adding the, uh, the, the ITA Airways colors and the logos and I'm stealing some elements from my, looks like to be a Delta A321 Neo template or illustration in the background there, you see. And uh, yeah, getting really close now. This is the fun part, the easy part. I mean, like I said, I mean, the ITA Airways livery, ETA, is very simple. It's the metallic that gets a little bit complicated. So yeah, here I am. I'm just throwing my grid of icons over top of the vertical stabilizer and the fuselage, not worrying about trying to, to wrap it around that shape. And see, you can't even tell, can you? <laughs> Unless you're looking at the illustration at full scale, you'd never know. So I'm adding some sheen now to get that metallic look into the blue. And I believe all I did there was I just added a very light blue gradient across the, um, the center of the fuselage there. It's a uh, it's just a very quick way of replicating a metallic texture. Like you can't even tell that it's not metallic. It just looks metallic because it has that sheen. And then once you add the hard reflection going all the way down the middle of the fuselage through the windows, that's when it really pops. So yeah, I believe I'm 
just about done here. I think that's about it. Adding some shading to the vertical stabilizer and yeah, there we go. It is complete. Ah, that was a lot more work than I thought it was going to be, but it was worth it because as I said, this is my favorite livery of the current times, I think. I think this is definitely my favorite. I like it. Just the blue and the metallics looks really good. Anyway, if you have any questions about any specific little thing that you saw in this video, I know it was fast. I'll do my best to answer those questions down in the comments below. So uh, yeah, drop me a comment. I'll respond as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.